Juan de Salcido, the last conquistador, was the first European recorded to have entered the Cagayan Valley. of northern Luzon has been well documented. It is the folklore story of his love for the princess Kandarapa that has been the most controversial. In 1571, Juan de Salcido's grandfather, Legaspi, sent his grandson to subdue the people surrounding modern-day Manila. While Salcido marched through a swamp, the 21-year-old happened upon 16-year-old Kandarapa bathing in the river. Kandarapa was beautiful and had been promised to the Raja of Makabibi to become one of the wives of the old turbulent chief. Kandarapa left a profound impression upon Juan del Cicido, and the two developed a loving relationship. When Legaspi heard of his grandson's infatuation, he kept him busy, hoping Salcido would forget this young princess. When the Raja of Makabibi learned of Kandarapa and Salcido's love affair, gathered his army, and forced members of Kandarapa's family, the Lacandolos, to attack Legaspi. During the battle, Raja of Maccabee was killed by a cannonball to the chest by Salcido and his men. Lacandola and many of his family were captured. Because of his love for Kandarapa, Salcido would petition for Lacandola to be released by his grandfather. And, the legend goes, that Kandarapa and Salcido married in secret. Hearing of his grandson's marriage, Legaspi was upset. Soon after, Juan de Salcido would be sent north in search of the gold that the lowlanders claimed came from the Igorot people in the mountains of central Luzon. Before he left, Gandarapa would give him a message in a group of white lotus flowers, which he kept close to his heart while he adventured up the local coast. His first grace test would be around Agu, where he would battle three Japanese vessels taking control of the mouth of the river. He would go up into the mountains at this point and locate one of the Igorot mines. Heading north along the western side of Luzon, the interaction between Salcido and the locals was described as follows. He was desirous of preserving a good understanding with the Indians and most of the towns on the coast received him in a very friendly manner and supplied him with provisions. But on entering the rivers and creeks, he found great resistance from the inhabitants. Opposition broke out among Salcido's party about the time that he was rounding the northern coast on his way to the Cagayan Valley. He went back to Vigan and left his second-in-command there with 25 soldiers. Around this time, reports of Salcido's adventures filtered back to Manila. Candarapa was told that he had married a young woman named Santa Lucia. One day, Salcido passed around the northern horn of Luzon and stopped at the mouth of the Cagayan River. Here, Salcido and his men would be the first Europeans to step foot in the Cagayan Valley. Due to the fatigue of his men and their low numbers, they did not go up the Cagayan River but continued their journey to the eastern side of Luzon. When Salcido returned home, his grandfather, Legaspi, the governor, was dead. Salcido learned of the lies about his marriage to Santa Lucia, which caused Kandarapa to die from a broken heart. Legend has it that he was distraught for months, rarely eating. To make matters worse, La Vesaris, the new governor who replaced his grandfather, disliked Salcido and placed Colonel Martin de Cote in charge. Cote's efforts were much more brutal in collecting tribute and much more successful. Augustinian fathers reported of these new efforts. We Spaniards are held in abomination. We are considered the usurpers of others' possession as faithless pirates and as shedders of human blood. Salcido would be put back in charge and sent up the Ilocos coast. Due to the reports that the Cagayan Valley offered a great opportunity, a large force was needed to enter it. In 1574, a gallant was sent to settle the Cagayan coast. However, at the same time, a Chinese merchant who had been expelled by Salcido's grandfather, Legaspi, had returned with a large army. 
It destroyed the galleot and killed all of its 22 passengers. Salcedo sent a small group of men to warn Manila of the incoming party and that he would be on his way to defend the city. Salcedo arrived on the day of the attack, helping save the Spanish colony and expelling Limahong to Pangasinan. The next year, Salcedo would be sent with an army and defeated Limahong at the Agno River. Many of Limahong's men fled to the mountains. A year later, Salcedo was visiting one of the Igorot mines around Vigan. At the age of 27, he died of an unknown illness. When they took off his clothes for burial, they found the dried up white locust Kandarapa gave him next to his heart. Rumors of these brutal Spanish would spread throughout northern Luzon. The Igorot people would never trust the Spanish again, and the Spanish would never conquer the Igorot people. However, improbable it may seem, for over the next 300 years, the Spanish would search in vain for the gold mines that killed Salcedo.